Hi and welcome to Faith Into Greatness. Thank you for joining me here today. Today I have a very inspiring word. I see that the Lord is trying to get as many people as possible into the kingdom of heaven. God inspired me to give a word. I'm going to share the word with you. I'm going to read directly from the scripture. But the point of this word is that no matter who you are, whether you pray to God every day, whether you're obedient to the Lord every day, whatever it is, God hears you. God is interested in what it is that you have been praying about so relentlessly. And just in the nick of time, in God's timing, okay? Not yours, not mine, not anyone's. God's going to answer. And with the answer to your prayer, you're going to start to grow co closer to God. And this is God's way of drawing you nearer. When God starts to answer your prayers, no matter who you are, take it as a sign that this is an honor, that God hears you, God sees you. But more importantly, it is a sign that we are one to remember where we came from before the Lord so graciously unveiled himself to us and showed us who God is and showed us our powers. We need to remain people who understand that it is by the Lord's will that this happens, not our own. So just as the scripture says, we have nothing to brag about. But the Lord may call you at times to be around people that others may deem to be unclean or impure. And I'm not encouraging this to be a lifestyle of yours, okay? Um, if you think you can't fall into temptation, you're very wrong. No matter what, the people that you surround yourself will, with all the time, if they're always around you in your face and you see them doing something and getting away with it, then you might think in your mind that it is something that can happen for you. And even if you don't think you might walk down a fallen path, you just never know. But the point of this message is that where the Lord leads you, okay, to share your story. In the scripture, people were moved to believe in God because they saw a miracle with their own eyes. The words of the scripture, although they're fabulous for those that the Lord has allowed the words to nurture them. When I first used to pick up the scripture and read it, I was actually sharing this with my husband recently. I had such a difficult time reading the scripture and getting through it. I had no interest at all. Not only did I not have an interest, I couldn't even begin to understand what was going on, okay? And that's why many times I encourage you to go look for kids' tales of the scripture so you can get a good overall picture of what is being spoken about and then maybe when you read the scripture again and again and again, as has happened to me, you'll start to see things a little differently. Ask God for the guidance, okay? I want to get into the scripture. But before I get into it, always remember that no matter who you are, the words of the scripture have power to change you as God has deemed it to be so, okay? Nothing is ever by our will, so please don't ever brag. Always remember where you came from before the Lord saved you and made you who you are. And please, 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 God loves, truly God loves his people. Even those that have never turned a day in their life to the Lord, God loves them. If they turn to their hearts right this moment and said, God, please forgive me for my sins, change my life, God would change their life in an instant, okay? But they would have to face some stuff. And that's up to God, right? God's judgment. But that is much better than never knowing God. So if you land on this word, just know you are never too far from the Lord, okay? Let's get into the scripture here. So the Lord tells Peter in the book of, let's get into the book of Acts chapter 10. So... 
At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and his, all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring it back, a man named Simon, who's called Peter. He's staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called for his servants, a devout soldier, and one of his attendants. <clears throat> he told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted to eat and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to the earth by its four corners. Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And this also applies to calling people impure that the Lord has made clean. Okay, God frowns down upon that as well. This happened three times. So Peter, wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. Go get up, go downstairs, don't hesitate to go with them. I'm just moving along here. So Peter says to the men, I'm the man that you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, we have come from, Corn from Cornelius the centurion, who's a righteous and God-fearing man, who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. Peter said to him, stand up, I'm only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising my, any objection. May, may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, three days ago, I was in my house praying at, his, at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Sent to Joppa for Simon who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon, the tanner who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was, it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews in Jerusalem. They killed by hanging him on the cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by the witnesses whom God had already chosen. But by us, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. I love that part. The Holy Spirit came upon all who heard the message. It was the Holy Spirit working to move their hearts. You understand? It wasn't Peter's 
words, God was using him, he was a tool. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on even the Gentiles, those who were called by others, what? Impure and unclean. And they began speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. I love that so much. That word is such an inspiration that no matter who you are, whether you believe in Jesus or not, if you reach out and you say, Lord, guide me, show me the way. I know for myself personally, I thought it was blasphemy to believe in Jesus. I thought it was blasphemy to believe in a man who rose from death until I realized that that was by the Lord's doing. And that the belief here is that Jesus rose from death as a living sacrifice for us, for our sins. And because he was made new, each and every one of us can be raised from our own personal death as a result of our own sin and be made new. So never look at anybody and say that person's impure or unclean or isn't going to make it to heaven or isn't a Jesus believer, so they're done for. That's not how God works, just as the scripture says. It is by our fear of the Lord and our faith that we are made good with the Lord, okay? And through our fear of God, we're going to what? Try to live in obedience. I hope this word blesses you all, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, as always, for your presence. Thank you for your wisdom and enlightenment. I see that you're trying to win over the hearts of every single person. And I really stand here in true admiration of you, Lord, for even going for the people who anyone would deem to be unclean and impure and just somebody who's unworthy of you, Lord. Even those that are the most unworthy, Lord, when they come to you and they seek forgiveness or they seek you, Lord, you answer. And that shows just how much your love is unconditional and never ending and all consuming. May your fire consume each and every person who seeks you. May they go out into the world, create miracles in the lives of others, testify about your goodness, Lord. May a seed be planted in each person. May your Holy Spirit come upon them and have them seek you, Lord, in all that they do. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. And Lord, of course, deliver us from evil and temptation every single day in everything we do. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. I hope this word blesses you all. Take care and God bless.